Hey everyone, Chris here with another filler episode. Now, today I was originally going to take a look at the various gamepads and joysticks I have for my consoles and PC and stuff, but then I realized if I took a look at so much stuff, this video would go on forever. So instead, what I'm going to do is take a look at only my PC peripherals, which I have about six of. So let's get started. Now of the six peripherals I have for the PC, only about three of them I still use anymore, and the other three I kind of don't. And this one I definitely don't use anymore, because it's one of the joysticks I had for my Tandy computer. But the thing is, this thing has never really worked properly. Like, I mean, first of all, yeah, it's kind of... Yeah, it's a little stiff and noisy when you move it. The buttons are nice, though, because the buttons are in good spots. Well, except for these two at the bottom, because if you're holding it like this, with your hand under the base, you can hit this button fine, but not this one. Not that it matters, because there's a switch on the bottom here that you switch between two different settings, and that actually sets both buttons to the same thing. So, I don't understand why they put two buttons on the bottom like that. Plus, it also, um, it's kind of breaking the thing at the side here, to keep dust from getting in, and... These are the calibration control switches, and they've never worked properly either, so... Yeah, this thing's kind of a POS. Moving on. Now this is definitely one of the better joysticks in my collection. It is a Microsoft Sidewinder Precision Pro. Uh, original model. Now the reason why that makes a difference is because this one has a sort of dial on it for the throttle, whereas the second model had sort of a lever thing that you would pull back and forth. It is kind of weird. But in any case, it's actually a pretty good joystick. Like, it has standard joystick movement, and it has the twist function as well, which you would normally use for rudder control. Yeah, it's old plastic, what do you expect? It has hat at the top, the fire button on the front is really big, and you got three buttons up top there. These four buttons here are really easy to hit, because you can put your hand over it like that. And then when do by doing that, your thumb has easy access to the throttle, and this button way at the back here. Now you could use this button at the back as just a normal button for gameplay, or you could use it as a shift button, whereas when you hold it down, now every other button on the joystick does something completely different. There's just one little problem with this thing. Now, for a joystick called the Precision Pro, you'd think it'd be really precise. And to be perfectly honest, it is. It actually uses optical sensors for the joystick itself, and that's why it has such precision to it unless you center it, because it's really loose in the center. So as a result, there is a ton of center drift. So unless your game supports a dead zone in it, then you're going to be not centering <laughs> as you're playing through the game. And it's, you find yourself fighting that center drift quite a lot when you're playing games with this joystick, but I've had this thing for a very long time now, and it's only more recently that I've stopped using it. So. It's definitely served its purpose. And hey, it still works, which is more than I can say for the next thing I'm looking at. This is my Logitech Wingman Action Pad. Now, this is actually the very first gamepad I owned for a PC, and for the time, it actually worked really nicely and had a lot of features. I mean, it's firstly, it's formed really nicely, so it fits in your hands really well, despite the fact that it kind of looks a little unwieldy. It has the shoulder buttons up here, which are really big. It has a throttle slider, if you can believe that. This is just weird. It has your D-pad at the side, it has an analog stick right here, and six face buttons. Well, seven if you count this one here. And one thing that's neat is that it has a mode button right here, so that you can actually swap the functionality of the D-pad and the analog stick. Those are the good sides. Here's the thing though. This thing has a really bad build quality. First of all, the D-pad, a little thing of plastic snapped off early in this thing's life, so pressing right on the D-pad on this thing has never really worked that nicely. Next, the shoulder buttons. They may be really big, but the actual contact for, you know, saying that the button's actually being pressed is at the top of these things. So if you try to push them from the bottom, you can hear them clicking, but they don't actually register because the th contact points are at the top. So pressing the shoulder buttons is problematic. 
And then there's the thing with having six face buttons arranged like this. I know Sega did it with their Genesis and Saturn controllers, but I've never really liked this design. And the reason is because if you put your thumb down on these, you can easily have access to four buttons at once. But to get to those other two, you have to move your thumb over. That takes conscious thought to do. And then once you're done with these buttons, you have to move your thumb back. It's just not a really good design, in my opinion. That's probably why you don't see six-button layouts on many controllers anymore. Most of them only have four. And then there's the analog stick. This thing, well, it's jittery as hell. I mean, seriously. When I first started using this thing way back, like 2002, I think was when I got this, the analog stick worked perfectly fine then. But since that point in time, it's been getting more and more jittery and less and less sensitive. As a result, it's at a point now where it's virtually unplayable. You can't do anything with this thing. You just have a jittering cursor all over the place. So yeah, build quality of this thing was terrible. But when it worked, it worked pretty well. So now let's get into the stuff that I actually still use. This here is my Logitech Dual Action Gamepad. And um, <laughs> it's actually more blue on camera than it is in real life. Yeah. Anyways, it's actually the same kind of form factor as a PlayStation controller. Well, particularly with their DualShock controllers. Like, I mean, it has two trigger buttons, two bumper buttons, four face buttons, start and select, and of course, two analogs, which also act as buttons. And of course, the D-pad. And just like the previous Logitech gamepad I showed you, it has the mode button right here to swap the functions of these two parts. Overall, this is actually a really good gamepad. And this is an older model. The models they sell nowadays actually have Xbox buttons on here and a switch on the back to switch between regular gamepad and Xbox 360 controller functionality because the two interfaces are actually completely different. There is only one, well, it's kind of like a semi-catch, I guess. If you take a look at the D-pad here, it's actually really raised over off the top of the surface there. I mean, when you press into it, I don't know if you can see this, but it actually, it's a huge amount of press just to get it to do anything. So quite often when you're trying to press single directions on this thing, you accidentally press two directions at a time, making diagonal movements because you have to push so far down. Now, some of the newer Sega Genesis controllers had that same issue. I never really liked that, but I guess as far as it goes, this is a pretty good gamepad. Now, this is actually a very recent acquisition, as in, I got this thing while I was still planning to do this video without it. It is an Intech Combat Arcade Stick, specifically for the PlayStation 3. Now, as I've said before, I don't own a PlayStation 3, but here's the thing. The connector for this thing? Yeah, it's USB. So that means if you plug this into a computer, it actually recognizes it as a joystick and you can use it on a PC. So for $25, I think I got a pretty good arcade stick here. Like, I mean, it's got eight buttons on the top and yeah, very clicky joystick because it's digital, of course, not analog. That's the whole point of the arcade stick. And it even has a turbo button up here so you can individually set any button to have turbo functionality. And it also has a program button so that you can program these buttons to do different things. Well, kind of. Like, I mean, basically it just amounts to taking one button and making it you do another button. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work on the PC side of things. And of course, because it's a PlayStation 3 controller, it's got five buttons up here to serve as Home, Start Select, and L3 and R3. I haven't really had a chance to use this thing that much yet because, well, I only I've only had it for like three days now. But I have played some 2D shooters with it and Super Street Fighter 4 and it works pretty well. The only catch is that this part right here gets registered in Windows as a hat as opposed to two axes. So basically what that means is unless you can assign hat functions to movement in whatever game you use it with, you otherwise can't use the joystick. But thankfully you can do that with Super Street Fighter 4 and all the other games I've been playing it with, so it actually works pretty well. But now feast your eyes on this thing. This is my latest joystick that has replaced my Sidewinder Precision Pro. This is the Thrustmaster HOTUS T.Flight X. 
Now, HOTAS is an acronym, H-O-T-A-S, which stands for Hands-On Total Aviation System. This thing is epic. It is a massive joystick. I'm even having trouble fitting it in the frame here. But it's got all the functionality you would expect. It's got standard movement, twist function for rudder. It's got the full throttle assembly so that you can actually have real throttle control. And actually the throttle itself, it's kind of hard to see, but it has a sort of rocker here, which acts as another axis. So there's actually five axes on this joystick. And then you've got the hat up here. You've got your fire buttons and all that up here. The throttle assembly has four buttons over here. And then two buttons at the top here. You got two buttons down here and as well as the home button. Now, that's not all of them because this is actually capable of working with a PS3 as well. So it obviously has to have all of the PS3 capable buttons. But here's the thing. For a joystick that is otherwise perfect, it has a button way up here that you push from the top. It's... <laughs> Whose idea was it to put that button there? I mean, seriously, on a joystick like this, that button should go around here, because that way you can use your thumb on it. I don't know. For what is otherwise a perfect joystick, that is the only thing I don't like about it. It even has hardware programming, just like the arcade stick I just showed you. There's a button on the side where you can literally assign any axis or button to any other axis or button. And then you can turn your mappings on and off. And yeah, this is a great joystick. And you want to know how much I paid for this thing? $50. Many sticks that have the full throttle assembly and everything are 200 plus. So for a Thrustmaster joystick that is a pretty much an entry level joystick with a throttle, this is a great thing. It's kind of hard to get nowadays. A lot of places that sell it new say that they're out of stock, but if you look around, you're sure to find one. So yeah, that was just a quick look at my joysticks and game pads for my PC. And um, for the most part, they're all between $20 and $50 new. Yeah, save for the Sidewinder Precision Pro, that thing I paid $80 for, but that was back at a time when those kinds of joysticks were still pretty expensive. The fact that you can get something like this now for $50 is pretty crazy. But yeah. I generally don't recommend joysticks for most PC games. The thing is, a lot of PC games generally work best with a keyboard or mouse. But things like a flight simulator or a 2D shooter is the best with a gamepad. And then there's other games that you might want to try with a joystick and see if you like them that way or not. In any case, that's all for this filler. So stay tuned for the next episode of Ancient DOS Games, episode 76, where I'm going to be taking a look at a game with taxis and dinosaurs. And I really don't think I need to say anything more than that. So if you know which game it is, send your guests to adg at pixelships.com and stay tuned to see this game in action. <laughs> <laughs>